So we're here with Val from Zero Avia. I wonder if you could just start introducing Val with a little bit of an update on your flight test program. Where have you got to and what major milestones have you achieved recently? So we're at Zero Avia, of course, test um, electric uh, power plants based on hydrogen electric aviation uh, uh, technology, fuel cells, uh, motors, power electronics. Uh, we have a very good uh, flight test program, as uh, as you know, uh, in our Campbell facility in Cotswolds. And uh, recently we have uh, flown our uh, 13th flight successfully, so that was great. Uh, I, I had a little bit of, uh, you know, messaging to the team, like that's uh, the flight number 13, let's make sure it, it, it goes well. So it went well. Um, so our flight test vehicle is performing greatly, and uh, we are getting all the data that we need um, uh, for the certification uh, design, and for the certification program, um, we have submitted our certification uh, uh, application to the CAA um, last December uh, for our first engine. So that is going well as well. Uh, so we're making great progress. And I believe you're quite in demand across the world in terms of pre-orders for the ZA600 powertrain system. Yeah, so our ZA600 powertrain system uh, that powers 10 to 20 seat aircraft uh, is called Part 23 aircraft has uh, generated a lot of demand, uh, about 700 orders uh, across the world, yeah, US, UK, continental Europe, um, and so forth. Uh, overall, we have about 2,000 uh, engines on pre-order, so 700 of them are ZA600, but then larger engines for larger propeller planes, uh, also in high demand, um, and even regional jets. So these are the three segments that we see, our initial segments uh, this decade that we're hoping to bring to market. Could you talk me through a few of the certification challenges in bringing this project to a type certification, certainly in the UK? Yeah, of course, such a project uh, with new technology faces a lot of certification challenges, as you can imagine. So we're working with the CAA um, and the FAA, actually. We have concurrent um, applications in both uh, geographies on first figuring out what the certification basis should be for this because this is new technology nobody has certified this type of power plant before so what needs to be developed first is how exactly we are going to certify it what is the book to which to certify and that's what we're working on right now um, it's uh, been going great for the last uh, few months uh, already we're uh, on track uh, for our plan and then after we figure out how exactly we're going to certify it, we then start testing it to those certification standards. But of course, uh, with all the flight tests that we've done and ground tests that we've done, we've done a lot of testing already. So we think once we get to that point, it will be an easier go. The biggest hurdle right now is to get to that certification basis and means of compliance. So Val, I wondered, had you noticed any difference in the approach to regulation between the FAA or the CAA, for example? Yeah, absolutely. There are some differences across the world um, for the CAA is an now independent regulator, EASA, in, uh, Continental Europe and FAA in the U.S. Um, what we are doing, uh, we are bringing all of the regulators uh, together. Yeah, so we have an application in the FAA lands, we have application in the CAA, and now EASA is joining as well uh, to harmonize uh, the approach uh, for these new technologies, hopefully. And, uh, you know, it makes some of the work harder uh, because we're dealing with three regulators instead of one. But um, I think over time, this will bring great dividends, not only to us, but also to the entire industry. Because aviation is a global industry and we need the same approach. What's the biggest difference you'd like to see as we move towards public perception of hydrogen powered aircraft? Biggest difference that we would like to see in a public perception is that this is becoming a reality sooner than a lot of people realize and there is nothing to be afraid of. You know, because uh, in the early days of uh, our company, we, uh, we had in my presentation deck, slide number two was the Hindenburg slide. Because everybody was asking the same question, like, hey, hydrogen, we, we remember the last time it was tried and flight, didn't end well. Yeah? And the message there is, you know, technology has improved uh, in 80 years. So, like, look at the other aspects of human technology, huge moves, uh, even on a decade basis, but over 80 years, the industry figured it out, right? Hydrogen is one of the largest commodities worldwide. We make 100 million tons every year. It's used in fertilizers, it's used in um, petroleum production, all of those areas. We know how to handle it, we know how to produce it, we know how to transport it. Uh, so everything, all the safety aspects are known. So there's nothing to be scared of and it's coming very, very soon.